Last weekend, in our exclusive members only server, someone dropped a link to this incredible image gallery archive I somehow missed asking how to recreate it. And honestly, I was just as curious. At first glance, it really looked complex with hundreds of images rendered dynamically and a toggle that zooms into the layout while calculating real-time distances between items. And to top it off, the entire gallery is draggable across the screen. It looked like a major challenge, but I couldn't resist giving it a shot. After about 7 to 8 hours, I managed to replicate this immersive experience using JavaScript and GSAP, combining vanilla JavaScript for that smooth drag effect and GSAP to handle the transformations. In this video, I'll walk you through how to build this full screen image gallery archive from scratch using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and a bit of GSAP. If you enjoy my work, consider hitting that like button and maybe subscribing as putting all this together takes a lot of time and effort and you won't find this anywhere else. For those looking to access the source code and support my work, check out the link in the description. Alright, let's get into the code now. Let's kick things off with the HTML setup. First, I'm adding a container for the logo with some placeholder text for now. Next, we need a section for the controls which includes two buttons to toggle between layouts. I'll give each button a unique ID and apply an active class to the first button since, by default, the gallery will start zoomed out. Inside each button, I'll paste SVG icons for a magnifying glass. You can replace these icons with any icon or simple text if that fits your design better. Then, I'm adding a div with the ID drag layer which will be essential for handling the drag functionality across the gallery. Finally, we have a container for the gallery itself where I'll add an empty gallery div. The images will be rendered dynamically using JavaScript later. And that's all for the HTML. Now let's dive into the styling. To start, I'm applying some global resets to remove default margins and paddings and setting box sizing to border box. For the HTML and body, I'm setting them to take up the full viewport width and height, giving us a blank black background and hiding any overflow. Next, all image elements are set to be fully responsive within their containers with object fit set to cover to maintain aspect ratio and user select is set to none to prevent accidental selections while dragging. Now for the logo, I'm positioning it in the center at the top using position set to fixed and also give it a semi-transparent white background with a blur effect rounding the corners. The text inside is styled with a clean uppercase font and placed right in the middle. The pad section which holds our toggle button is fixed at the bottom center of the viewport. It has a similar styling to the logo with a semi-transparent white background, a border and a subtle blur effect. Each button is styled to be transparent and transition smoothly when toggling. The active button has a reduced opacity to indicate its state and pointer events are disabled to make it non-interactive. For the container, I've centered it in the viewport and set the width and height to 150% of the viewport to give our gallery plenty of space to render the images. The images inside the gallery style to fill the container with a flex layout. The items are wrapped, centered and spaced out with a small gap for a consistent look. I've also set transform origin to the center which will be important for the zoom effect.
We calculate the width of each image item by taking the full container width, subtracting a fixed 236 pixels for paddings or gaps, and dividing the remaining space equally among 60 items. Each item image is given an initial scale of 0 and hidden opacity to prepare for the animation. Using will change set to transform helps optimize the animations and makes interactions smoother. Lastly, we have the drag layer which is a full screen fixed layer to detect the drag actions. It's initially hidden and will toggle it on or off during interactions. With our CSS in place, our layout is ready to go. Now let's get into the JavaScript to make this interactive. First, we wait until the page is fully loaded using DOM content loaded to set up the gallery, buttons and drag functionality. We also define some constants, total rows and images per row to manage the grid of images and total images to calculate the full image count. To create the images, I use a loop to add div elements with the class image. Each image gets a random height within a range and I randomly assign a source from our assets folder. Once created, each image is pushed into an array for later use. Next, I apply an initial animation to all images using GSAP where each image scales up and fades in with a random staggered effect across the grid creating a visual dynamic load-in. Now we have two buttons for zooming. Let's start with the zoom out button. First, I'll add a click event listener to it. We are going to check if the gallery is already zoomed out by using the flag. If it's not zoomed in, we simply exit here. Otherwise, we set the flag to false and hide the drag layer since we won't need to drag the gallery when zoomed out. Next, I'm capturing the gallery's current transform property so that we can reset its state smoothly. To prevent any jumps or layout shifts, I'll clear any previous transform settings on the gallery using GSAP. Then, I'll set up a timeline with a duration of 2.5 seconds and a smooth easing effect to animate everything back to the original position. This timeline will return the gallery to 0 on X and Y axis and scale each image back to its starting size, creating a nice zoom out effect. After the animation, I'm resetting the drag related variables to 0, which I'll explain in more detail shortly. Finally, I update the button states, adding the active class to the zoom out button and removing it from zoom in to show that the gallery is now zoomed out. Now moving on to the zoom in button, I'm also adding a click event listener here. We start by checking if the gallery is already zoomed in and if so, we exit. Otherwise, we set the flag to true and display the drag layer so that we can enable dragging when zoomed in. For the zoom in effect, I'm iterating over each image in the gallery First, I calculate the image's distance from the center of the viewport. Using GSAP, I animate each image to move and scale based on its distance from the center, creating a zoom effect that adds depth. Each image scales up by a factor of 5 and shifts slightly based on its offset from the center, making it feel immersive. Finally, I update the button states by adding the active class to the zoom in button and removing it from the zoom out button, indicating that the gallery is now zoomed in and ready for the interaction. 
To enable dragging, I first set up some variables that will track the drag state. The flag to check if dragging is currently happening, start x and start y to store the initial position when we start dragging while initial x and initial y capture the gallery's position at that moment. Target x and target y will be our destination coordinates as we drag and current x and current y are updated smoothly to create a smooth animation effect. To handle smooth movement, I am using a function called lerp which stands for linear interpolation. This function helps transition smoothly between the current x and target x positions making the drag movement look more fluid and natural. Then we have the animate function which runs continuously to keep updating the gallery's position based on the current x and current y values. Inside, it checks if dragging is active or if the difference between target x and current x is greater than a small threshold. If either condition is true, it updates current x and current y using lerp to bring the gallery closer to the target position. Then it applies a translate 3D transform to the gallery with the current coordinates. This function calls itself using request animation frame which ensures the animation is smooth and keeps running. Next, we have the handle drag start function which sets up the initial drag behavior. We only allow dragging when the gallery is zoomed in, so I first check if the flag is true. If zoomed in, I set the flag to true and add the active class to drag layer for visual feedback. Then I capture the initial position by checking whether it's mouse or touch event so I know where the drag started. I retrieve the gallery's current transform and use DOM matrix to get the precise x and y values. These values set initial x and initial y for reference while current x and current y are initialized to match them so we are ready to start the drag from the current position. Finally, I attach event listeners to mouse move and touch move for handling drag movement and mouse up and touch end for ending the drag, depending on the device being used. In handle drag move function, we calculate the distance moved from the initial position. I check if the flag is true, then prevent the default event to stop any other actions. To get the current drag position, I check if it's a mouse move or touch move event. Then I calculate the distance moved by finding the difference between the current position and start x and start y. These distances delta x and delta y are added to initial x and initial y to calculate the target x and target y which will guide the gallery smooth movement. In handle drag end function, I set the flag to false to stop dragging and remove the active class from the drag layer. Then I remove all event listeners for mouse move, mouse up, touch move and touch end to end the drag process keeping the gallery steady in its final position. Finally, I attach the drag function to drag layer so it listens for mouse down and touch start to start dragging, whether on desktop or touch devices. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.